Hello, people of God. It's good to be with you and to open God's word once again together. I want to turn again to Proverbs and look together at Proverbs chapter 8. And we'll just read together the first 17 verses of Proverbs chapter 8. This is God's own word. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portal she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. O simple ones, learn prudence. O fools, learn sense. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. From my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have counsel and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me princes rule and nobles all who govern justly. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Uh, we'll stop the reading of the chapter there. I, I commend the whole chapter to you. I wish we had the time to, to go through it all and consider it all deeply together. But we want to continue our kind of overview of the book of Proverbs. And I've had to particularly discipline myself in teaching this. I think this is my favorite book in the Bible. Uh, this is a book that I come back to time and time again because I want to be wise. Um, you know, we live in an information age where we know a lot of things or we can read about a lot of things. Uh, but it's really wisdom that allows us to process information, to process knowledge, to act on it, not just in a knowing way, in an intelligent way, but in a wise way. Um, we all know that information and knowledge and wisdom are two different things. Um, I like the, the quip that someone made once. All the smartest, some of the smartest people I know have advanced degrees. All of the dumbest people I know have advanced degrees. Uh, we know that there's, there's a difference between knowing and being wise, right? Um, and we want to study Proverbs because it tells us how to be wise. Uh, God is all wise. Jesus Christ is the personification of the wisdom of God. Um, and the wisdom of God is seen, as we talked about last time, in all the works of his creation, um, in all the ways of his providence, the scriptures reveal to us the wisdom of God working itself out in history. Um, and Proverbs clearly teaches us that wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Um, as one commentator put it, the fear of love that produces godly character and righteous conduct, knowledge of God, and submission to his will. He was contrasting, you know, sort of uh, fear of punishment. He said that's not the, the attitude that Proverbs takes, but that fear of love. Uh, a love for God that produces godly character, righteous conduct, knowledge of God, and submission to his will. Uh, what Christian doesn't want those things? Um, the fear of the Lord, Proverbs teaches us, is, as another commentator said, the basic principle of all true knowledge. Um, and so Proverbs can seem just like a collection of you know, witty sayings, you know, someone could just call it, you know, the wit and wisdom of Solomon. Um, these little clever sayings, some of which we really like, um, some of which we like more than others. You know, some of us really like sayings like a fool's mouth invites a beating. Um, those are memorable kinds of things, but these aren't just a collection of sayings. These are divine precepts that come from our God about wisdom and talks to us about the fact that whoever practices wisdom and the wisdom contained in this book is using the best means to achieve the highest goals. Um, that's what uh, Hendrickson reminds us of. Uh, William Hendrickson said that you, the, the wisdom contained in this book is using the best means to achieve the highest goal. Um, and so we want to think about what, what do we find in this book? What is the general collection of wisdom here all about? Uh, the main theme, of course, is the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And in the first seven verses, we have a really good introduction to uh, the whole book. So in chapter one, verses one through seven, we kind of have the purpose of the book given that we might know wisdom and instruction. Um, we also have the main theme of the book given, 
um, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but the foolish despise knowledge and instruction. Um, and so we're being exhorted to be wise. And so uh, the next section of the book, really chapters 1, verses 8 through the end of chapter 9, uh, are really the commendation of wisdom. Uh, so the praise of wisdom um, being played out. The, these, these chapters mainly comprise the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Um, and they contain many instructions in the form of, a, of an address by a father to his son. Um, where the, ch the son is urged to be loyal to his mother and his father. Um, he's exhorted to pursue true friendships. He's warned against false friendships and where they lead. Um, and these are instructions that are fitted for all ages. So there's uh, instructions for the child, for the youth, and for the man. Um, so all ages are thought about there. So wisdom is commended. The commendation or the praise of wisdom is contained in chapters really 1 through 9. Um, <clears throat> then in chapters 10 through 22, really we have a lot of contrasts and observations. These are also called the Proverbs of Solomon, and they're Proverbs that consist mostly of two contrasting sentences, uh, contrasting will, uh, wisdom and folly in their application in practical life. So you'll have a lot of uh, these kinds of comparisons that we find, for example, in, in chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongs days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You can see that comparison, right? The years, um, the fear of the Lord prolongs days, um, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So we have those kinds of contrasts going on um, in this book. So that's a lot of what happens in chapters 20, 10 through 22. So there's a lot of that. Um, it's not all that, but it's a lot of that. And um, a lot of the wisdom is contained there um, in, by way of those kinds of uh, contrasts and observations. Um, then we move into chapters 22 through 24, um, and you'll find there are more exhortations um, or precepts about wisdom um, and warnings. So these are called the words of wise men, so we're not exactly told whose words these are. Um, but in these chapters we'll find, for example, the description of the evil effects of wine and drunkenness. Uh, we'll find warnings against the way of the sluggard. And so really in 22 through 24, we can expect to find a lot of exhortations and warnings. Um, so an example of an exhortation is uh, Proverbs 23, tw uh, 23, 12. Apply your heart unto instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. So that's an, that's an encouragement, an ex exhortation um, or a precept from God. Um, a warning would be uh, Proverbs 24, 17. Rejoice not when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he is overthrown, um, lest God sees it and is displeased. Uh, so there we have a warning. That's an example of a, a, one of the warnings that we find in that passage. Uh, so chapters 20 through 24 really major in those kinds of exhortations and warnings. Um, then when we get to chapters 25 through 29, uh, the major note that sounded there are comparisons, or we might say similitudes and contrasts. Um, these are Proverbs of Solomon, which the, which the men of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, copied out. Um, and so you have these comparisons and contrasts. That's a, those will a lot more be found in chapters 25 through 29. Again, none of these are exclusive, but they give you a kind of sense of what you can expect to find on the whole there. Uh, comparisons and contrasts in chapters 25 through 29. So it would be a good example of a comparison. Um, well, we could think of chapter 27, 19. As in water, face answers face, so does the heart of man, man. Um, so does the heart of man to man. So just as you see your face reflected when you look down into the water, um, so you see the man by his heart, right? There's a great comparison from nature to the nature of things in the heart. Um, so those are the kinds of comparisons or contrasts you can expect to find um, in, in that section of the book. And then in, in chapters 30 and 31, we have some descriptions, um, descriptions of wisdom and descriptions of wise people. Uh, so one example of the descriptions we can find in chapters 30 and 31 um, is kind of a famous one. The ants are not a strong people, yet they provide their food in the summer, Proverbs 30, 25. So we have these kinds of descriptions of wisdom. Um, these, are, these last two chapters contain the words of Agur and of King Lemuel. 
people we don't know anything about from anywhere else in the scriptures, but are clearly wise men. Uh, Augur gives us a remarkable and striking prayer about the balanced life, um, not having too much, not having too little. Uh, King Lemuel quotes his mother's advice against passion and strong drink and reminds kings that their first duty is the care of the oppressed and the needy. Um, and then, of course, it ends with the praise of the virtuous woman whose beauty, diligence, and helpfulness are exhorted. And so Proverbs can seem like just a kind of disconnected um, web of just sayings and can kind of seem hard to work through sometimes because we don't really know where we're looking for these different sayings. So I'm hoping that getting that idea of the of the structure of the book, seeing how the book moves from wisdom's commendation, the praise of wisdom, to contrasts and observations about wisdom, to exhortations and warnings uh, concerning wisdom, comparisons and contrasts concerning wisdom, descriptions of wisdom. We can see how all of this together functions in God's will to paint a clear picture of wisdom from many different angles, looking at wisdom in nature, in God's word, and reminding us that if we want to be truly wise, uh, to use the best means to achieve the highest goal, uh, we need to look to wisdom and act with wisdom. I think this is one of the most needed things for Christians in our day, to be wise. Um, there's a danger that we don't, that we adapt our means to the world's means of achieving goals. Um, and rather than act with the wisdom that God's word sketches out, we, we, we adopt worldly wisdom on things and mirror more the world in how we act than, how we, than God's will. Um, and we don't achieve the highest goals through doing that. Um, the goals we want to achieve are wisdom. I, I love that wisdom says in chapter 8, those who diligently seek me find me. Uh, those who wish to become wise can become wise. And God has given us this wonderful book of wisdom. Um, and even Jesus, we're told, as a young man growing into an older man, uh, grew in wisdom. And, and we can grow in wisdom, too, by applying ourselves to these things um, and growing up to the full stature of wisdom uh, in Jesus Christ by the help of the Holy Spirit. So this is a book we should return to time and time again. Uh, I hope that you're uh, as intrigued by this book as I am and uh, enjoy coming back to it, because I think not only we see a picture of wisdom that we would like to see in our lives, but we also see the wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, because every time we read about a wise way to act or a description of wisdom, uh, we can see in it a description of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was the wisdom of God, who acted with wisdom in his character and all of his ways, um, who was upright and perfect, and who used the highest means, uh, the best means to achieve the highest goal, which was to do the will of his Father. And may this book help us to follow in his, in his footsteps and be faithful servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and ask God would help us in these things. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do desire to be a wise people. We understand how much importance there is in the world of being wise. And there is so much folly that is peddled in the world as wisdom. But we thank you that the book of Proverbs is concerned about how we do things, the means by which we go about living life in the world, it reminds us of the goals which we ought to be pursuing in this life. And so Lord, we pray you would forgive us when we have adopted the wisdom of the world, when we have sounded and spoken and walked more like the world than like our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that application of this book to our hearts and lives might involve us being wise in the way we go about trying to achieve goals and wise in the goal that we set before our eyes, uh, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and that we desire to walk in a fear of you, in a kind of fear that will produce that righteous conduct and upright lives that we desire to see in serving your name <clears throat> and help us to think on the Lord Jesus Christ and on his life and all the ways in which he manifested wisdom uh, in the way he lived his life every day, in the way he went about doing your will, that he not just did your will perfectly and accomplished that goal for which you'd set him in the world, but he used the proper means to achieve those goals. He was wise in his ways. He was wise in his words. Um, he was wise in his dealings with his fellow men. He was wise according to his life before you, before his earthly parents, before his friends. Uh, his life is to be commended as a life of wisdom, 
And Lord, we desire to live wise lives. So build us up in wisdom, we pray. Help us to seek and find it, to apply it in our lives, uh, that we might glorify your name. So help us in these things and hear us, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. Um, and I'll leave you with one non-biblical piece of wisdom.